Hey, smart people, Joe here. You know what I freaking love? Cereal. You know what I hate? The cereal at the bottom of the box. You ever notice how by the time you get to the bottom, you're left with this? It's just like little crumbs and boring stuff. The dregs, if you will. The tastiest big bites are gone. But that doesn't really make sense. If cereal is mixed in the box, well, shouldn't it stay that way? Or if anything, why doesn't the bigger, heavier stuff sink to the bottom? Watch what happens when I shake up this bag. When I pour the cereal out, there's more delicious bits in the first bowls from the top of the bag. Why does this happen? Well, the answer is science. Well, technically that's the answer to everything, but especially this. Okay, back to why does this happen? Well, it's curious that the heavier bits rise to the top instead of falling to the bottom. Well, the same thing happens with granola and nuts. Shaking a can of mixed nuts doesn't actually mix them up. It unmixes them. And big nuts like Brazil nuts always rise to the top. That's why this strange phenomenon is commonly called the Brazil nut effect. Though I don't really like Brazil nuts and I love Raisin Bran. So I'm renaming it the Raisin Bran effect and it's powered by physics. When we shake something up, we expect it to get more random. But for many mixtures, that isn't what happens. Shaking them actually makes them less random. Now, scientists started digging into this strange phenomenon in the late 80s, and how it works is still kind of driving them nuts. The key ingredient is motion. Now, to make particles move, we have to accelerate them. And for these particles, that means accelerating them enough that they overcome gravity. They bounce or jump and that allows them to rearrange. Well, there are a couple of different mechanisms going on here. One is called granular convection. Granular means it's made up of small grains or particles and moving by convection, a sort of rolling flow. In a container, as things get vibrated and jostle around, the friction between the grains and the side walls draws particles near the edges down. Particles near the center are pushed up and we get convection swirls. Even if there's a big, dense object in the mix, it gets shuggled up the middle by the convection currents, and it stays there. That's right, I said shuggled. It's a new Scottish word that I learned that means to shake, and it's awesome. But there's another way that this sorting can happen besides convection. It's called percolation. Basically, small particles fall into the cracks left by their bouncing neighbors. And as they fill in those spaces, the bigger particles get pushed towards the top. Think of it like a ball bouncing on a platform that levels up every time the ball jumps. We can see this in a really cool way with some sand, some salt, and this thing I built. Watch what happens when I pour it through this little hole. See that? They separate. If we look closely, we can see that when the different grains impact, they're still pretty mixed. But as they settle, the layers start building. Larger grains quickly roll down the hill, but the smaller grains get stuck in cracks along the way. As the small stuff fills in empty spaces, large particles roll along on top of it. This process repeats and that gives us those nicely stratified layers. Okay, so this is cool and all, but do percolating particles and granular convection actually matter in the real world? Well, it does if you're caught in an avalanche. Now, avalanche airbags inflate around a person tumbling and being buried by snow. They don't float you up the way a life jacket floats you in water. They basically turn you into a human Brazil nut, a big particle rising in a mix of smaller snow. Physics can save lives. Who knew? Well, actually, car airbags, seat belts, ejection seats, bulletproof vests, MRIs, I guess that's not really news. Anyways, even rocks in riverbeds separate this way, the larger ones on top, and it shows up in space. It's one explanation for large boulders on the surface of asteroids that have no other business being there. Best part, you can try this at home. Shake a bowl of popcorn to get the biggest, fluffiest kernels up to the top. It even works with a bowl of chips. In fact, I wanna know where you find this effect. 
Send me a video the next time you see the Brazil nut effect, I mean, the Raisin Bran effect in action. Stay curious. And good for you too. Hmm. We got a few people to thank for today's video. First off, I wanna give a big shout out to the channel F Yeah Fluid Dynamics. Now, there's a video about this stuff over there that inspired a lot of my questions and Nicole was a huge help in putting together this video. She's got a ton of awesome fluid dynamics videos over there at F Yeah Fluid Dynamics that you should check out. Now, what does the F stand for? It stands for fun. Also want to tell you about another show in the PBS Digital Studios family called Origin of Everything, where Danielle takes a look at the historical origins of everything, which are sometimes a little bit weird. They've got videos about stuff like why we eat breakfast the way we do and why we eat popcorn when we go to the movies, two things which are suddenly very relevant after today's video. And finally, I want to say a big thank you to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios and It's Okay to Be Smart. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming video service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from a variety of filmmakers. And their collection features a bunch of Curiosity Stream originals, like Curiosity Stream's original three part series called The Age of Big Cats. It profiles the seven major species of big cats that are alive today in a unique way that tells you the story of how they survive with plenty of sweet night vision footage of big cats doing big cat stuff. You can learn more at curiositystream.com smart and use the code smart during the sign up process.